All right, so for this tutorial, we are doing the pop art portrait tutorial. Um, and this is an example of what I did earlier today. And then here is an example of what I've done in the past with this project. I'm going to go ahead and do this one um, in case you don't have a portrait to use. Um, we're going to try doing this because it has a strong object in it. So um, Photoshop hasn't been very friendly, so we're not going to put it onto a new canvas this time. But we are going to separate the background from the object in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to unlock our um, project in the layers panel. And then you can separate the background or select the background a couple of different ways. One, you could use the magic wand tool, which is the, um, it's the fourth tool down. Hold, press and hold that and you choose magic wand or the quick selection. Notice the W. That is a, um, a shortcut that you could add to your sheet. The magic wand tool, what you do is you just select the background and it selects similar things. So you would just press and hold the shift button on your keyboard and it will add to it. Um, it works if you have more of a background that's the same color, not a lot of differences. Um, you can change some of the options up here. I, I usually don't. We could play with it and see what happens. So it does more when you do that. So maybe that was a good idea. Um, so just keep clicking until you have that all selected. Okay. Um, if it, that one's not working for you, you can try um, to deselect. You can do select, deselect, or control D, which is another shortcut. For the quick selection, you can choose that. You press and hold and drag around. Every time I've used it today, it's shut down Photoshop. So I'm not going to use it right now. Or you can press and hold, um, or I'm sorry, you can do the magnetic lasso tool, like what we did for our Combine 2 project. And this one, you're just selecting the object that you want to cut out, which is opposite of what we're being asked to do. We're being asked to cut out the background. So what you would do is you would go around this and try to be a little bit better than what we did for the Combine 2 project. I know it's hard and I'm hurrying right now so don't mind me. And I just want this object. I'm going to show this one to you all the way because it's a little different. So we're just going to go all the way around here and then you make the loop, right? So now we need to um, select the background and what you do is you hit control shift I and it switches the inverse of what is selected. So at this point what you would do is you would press delete on your keyboard and it gets rid of the background but we have a lot of extra stuff so we're going to clean it up. So if you hit control D or select deselect then you can go in with your eraser and erase things. You can make it smaller, bigger, whatever you need to get rid of it. You don't have to be super specific. It's okay. It's, you know, this is kind of a, a loose tutorial in a way. Sometimes we need it a little bit more specific here. But for the tutorial purpose of what I'm showing you, this is what I'm going to do. So then to go on, we need to select the background again. It would be a lot, it would be really easy just to do the magic wand tool and then you have it selected. I'm going to play around with the magic wand tool a little bit. So I'm going to step backward a few times. And uh, because I want to play around with that. So please bear with me. I'm just hitting Alt Control Z. So I'm going to go back to the magic wand tool and play around with this a little bit. Um, a little intrigued now that we've changed the tolerance, I'll be honest with you. So I might keep some of these background images just out of curiosity. Probably not this one up here though. Uh-oh, I made a mistake. Okay, we're going to try this again. I'm going to go opposite like I did with the combined two one with the magnetic lasso tool. And I'm going to do opposite. Let's see what happens here. We're all learning, right? 
and there's about 10 million and one different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. So might as well explore a little bit, right? It's a little bit time, it takes a little bit extra time, but I think it is worth it for the most part. Oh no, I just hit Alt Control Z to step backward. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So I don't want this area right here. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift I and I'm gonna select it. There we go. And now we have the background selected. So we're gonna press Delete on our keyboard it gets rid of it. Now we need to fill in the background. And I kind of kept it this way because I think I'm going to try to make this more of a design type project than showing anything specific. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit, Fill, and in our tutorial it tells us to go white, um, but you can choose a color if you want. I'm going to do a color that is opposite of the colors I see now. So I'm going to choose like a purple. That way it'll really pop. Okay, so now that we have that all done, we need to deselect. So Control D or select, deselect, whatever you choose to do. Now we need to um, duplicate this layer, and the shortcut version of doing that is Control J, or you can drag this layer down to that new layer icon at the bottom. So Control J, Control J. Please make sure that all three of your layers look exactly the same in the thumbnail. Now we're going to rename these. The top one will be cut out. The bottom one or the middle one will be hard light. And the bottom one will be stamp. Okay. So now we are going to click uh, the visibility icon off for the top two layers and make sure the bottom layer is selected we are going to go to the filter gallery. Make sure you do this one right here, not that one. The filter gallery, you turn on and off these folders by the triangle there. So we're gonna go down to the sketch folder and choose stamp. And if you need to, you can zoom out a little bit in the bottom there. And you're gonna make sure that the light dark balance is on seven and one. If you wanna go back later and play with those numbers, I think that's definitely okay. Press OK. So there's that first layer, and you can see it over here. Now we're going to click on that middle layer and select it so it's highlighted. Then the layer blends mode, we use that for the merge project. We're going to click, and we're going to bring down to hard light. So you can see it's changed a little bit there. Okay, now we're going to click on the third or that top layer and make sure we see it there. And then we're going to go back up to the filter gallery and turn off the sketch folder and on the artistic one and choose cut out. Make sure this is seven, 10, and two. If you need to zoom out to see what it looks like, you can. It really just kind of groups some of the colors together. Click okay. And then in the layer blend mode, you're gonna click on that normal and change it to multiply. And then it kind of brings everything together. So. It kind of abstracts things in a way and just kind of gets you to look at your project a little bit differently. At this point, you're going to file, save as, put it in your H drive. And this one should be like pop, portrait, your last name. And if you're done with it, save it as a JPEG. If you're still working on it, save it as a Photoshop document. So you're going to save it there, click OK. And then you're going to create a blog post. The title would be the Pop Portrait or Pop Art Portrait um, Project. The label would be um, Projects. You could also add in Photoshop if you wanted to. And then you're going to describe what we did here. Make sure to include your original image and your finished image. Um, play around with this. I think there's a lot that could be done with it. And I hope you enjoyed it.